So in this video, we are going to take a look at creating manual MIDI triggers from an audio event from within Persona Studio One. Now, I'm going to be the first to say that this has been covered uh, plenty of times going back all the way to Studio One version one or two. That being said, I don't feel like it's being covered um, fully. And that's why I'm going to break this video up into two steps. The first one is going to be very easy where we talk about how to do it. And it's very simple. The second one is going to be talking about all the things you need to keep in mind after the fact. All right, so let's dive in. First things first, we have a kick drum track here from a song and I've pulled this out. Let's have a listen. When you're doing MIDI trigger detection points, one of the things you need to pay attention to is how much bleed you have. So let's choose basically the cleanest track. Okay, this one. Okay, so I can hear a lot more of the snare, maybe where there's cymbals, there might be more bleed. So right off the bat, I'm going to say that we're gonna go with this one. Let us momentarily, let's just hide and disable this one. Okay, so first things first, how do we do this? Well, we need to use the audio band tool. We need to detect the transients. There's two ways that you can do this. You can right click and if you go to audio, we have the option to detect transients. Notice I also have a key command. I'm gonna fire that off from here. This will do a transient detection. The other thing that we can do is we can open up the audio bend menu. And from here, we have a little bit more options. Like for example, we can choose whether we wanna use a standard detection or sensitive. Now in terms of this, it's pretty simple. We wanna dial this up till basically we're only getting the trigger points that we need and we're not getting too many. What do I mean by this? Well, if there was any snare hits or anything, any ghost notes that were happening in the background, that those are not being picked up as double hits. So this looks pretty good. Let's take a look over here. Okay, take a look at this one. Notice we need this to be picked up, so we need to increase the threshold a little bit. Okay, so it got it. This is something that once you get used to reading this, you can kind of go through pretty quickly. And it's it's move, it's move it hasn't detected these trigger points. So if I was to move this up all the way, notice here, it picked up the snare one. So we want it back at around, I think we had it around like 59%. Okay, so that is step one. Now the next step is you can basically just drag over an instrument of some sort. In this case, I'm gonna use Studio One um, effects or rather Studio One instruments. So we are going to go to the uh, Impact XT and we can drag over an exact preset if we want. Let me see if I have anything that kind of stands out. What do we got here? Detroit kit, dope kit, default, funky kit. Looking for just something like a basic acoustic kit. Hip ground under. Okay. I'm not seeing anything that's popping out right off the top of my head. So let us go with, we'll go with funky kit for now. I'm just going to drag this, this right in as an instrument. Now let's listen to the kick. Okay. That's actually not bad. Okay. So the first step to do over here is literally you're going to click, hold and drag, and you're going to drag this down. And now notice what's happened. If I double click this, we have all of these MIDI triggers. Now you can view this in the drum view, um, or you can view it in the piano view. It, it, it pretty much is up to you. So the first thing that I need to do though, is let's go back to drum view momentarily. I'm going to do a command A. So I'm going to select everything and I need to bring these up until they hit C1. So with everything selected, I'm going to hold down the shift and up arrow. There we go. Now we've just placed all of these because they were on C3. We've just placed all of these on C1. Now the next thing that we need to do is the one thing I like, I will say this, the one thing I like about using the bend markers is that let's say that you have something where you have a specific velocity that's intact. Let me temporarily hide the bend markers over here. And let's take a look at these. In general, they're all pretty even, but notice that there is velocity difference in terms of the information. So when you want something that sounds natural, and I don't just mean 127 or full velocity for every single hit, this has the potential, this has the potential to give you a really transparent sound. Now let me open up the MIDI over here. Let's temporarily switch to the piano view. And if you hold alter option while double clicking, this will bring everything into view. These are going to match the general dynamics of everything. And it's going to kind of average it out based on the loudest hit or the, or the dynamic range of everything. So take a look at this one over here and notice that they all have a different velocity. They're not all the same. I actually like this. Now, when you're working, you can choose to go in either drum view or, or sorry, drum view, or you can choose to go in the piano roll view. It really doesn't matter, but now it's just a matter of basically playing the two of these together and doing a mix between the two of them. 
Let me bring this up. This needs to be brought up. Actually, let's bring it up a lot. Now I'm going to slowly bring this in. Okay, there was something there. I heard a double. I need to give myself some more volume here. Let's bring up our mixer. Let's bring this back. Let me take auto align off temporarily. We'll take this off. Let's bring this up a little bit more. Okay, so this is the idea. If you just want to get something going really, really quickly, then that's it. You're done. You can, if you just wanted to bang out a quick demo and you wanted to do really simple drum replacement, you're done. Now, my issue with this is something we're going to dive into with the next video. So if you're interested in that, I'll catch you for more in the next video.